This is the horror movie show on HMPod.com, your one-stop shop for all things horrific and horror-related. Read the reviews, frolic in the forum, hem and haw over the horror scopes, and listen mightily to the horror movie show with Mark and Jerry, your horrible hosts. Good day, folks. Jerry here. And Mark. Bringing you another episode of HM Pods Horror Movie Show. Please visit our website. You can like us on Facebook. Do a search on uh, Horror Movie Show. We've got a new Facebook page, so you can like us there and find stuff about the show and movies we'll be talking about and TV series like this one, The Walking Dead. Yes. We're going to talk about Season 3. That just wrapped up a couple of weeks ago. And uh, I really enjoyed Season 3 compared to Season 2. I thought Season 1 was very strong, but it was short. Yes, very short. And then Season 2 sort of bogged down a little bit too much on the family stuff and trying to find a, a happy home there on the uh, on Herschel uh-huh. Green's farm. Yeah, and the fact that they really didn't accomplish much there. No, it didn't seem so. And I mean, they could have done it in two episodes. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, they, they, did in the, yeah, they, they really did. They didn't have, like, a big enemy the way they wound up having in Season 3. Yeah. Which is terrific, because they got themselves a nice psychotic, yeah. <laughs> uh, megalomaniac dictator, the governor. Yeah. Played by David Morrissey, and I know I've said this before, but I find it really interesting that two of the main characters on Walking Dead, which is a quintessentially American show, mm. are played by English actors. Yeah. The main character, well, he's no longer... Strictly speaking, the main character, but he is still sort of... The leader. The leader, yeah. Uh, although he relinquishes that in the second to last episode in That's season right. three. He's made a mistake. Yes, he <laughs> says, you know, no, we can't... Be a dictatorship. Yeah, we can't have me making all the decisions because I'm not going to make the right decisions. For the anyway, group, yeah. the reason that we are worth staying alive, the reason that we are worth surviving is that we are the a, people a collective who yeah. should be surviving a community a community indeed a family yeah that kept being brought up again and again and again and family was a big thing in, in this third season what with Lori who just became more and more pregnant until yeah. finally she burst she popped <laughs> and they had to cut the baby out I'm I'm not sure exactly why I guess she just you know narrow hips or something but she knew that she was going to need a cesarean, and the um, closest thing they have to a medical man is Herschel, and he's a vet. Yeah, and, and she was as big as a horse. And he lost a leg, so Herschel wasn't there in the tombs when she finally had to have the baby. It was her and her son, Carl. There was a woman with them. It wasn't Carol. Carol, played by Melissa McBride, she had trained. She had taken a dried-up Walking Dead and actually trained on how to do a cesarean section. That's right. Yeah, yeah. That was fun. But anyway, poor old Lori wound up having her guts opened up and the baby taken out, and then her boy Carl had to... uh, blow her head off so that she wouldn't return as a zombie as a zombie although that word is still never used well in that funny you'd think they'd be using it all the time i think <laughs> they did use it in a, with a different group well you know each group has its own name for, for them, them. Yeah, they, the people in the town call them biters yeah they're trying to keep away from the norm Yes. Yeah, well, indeed. Yeah. And honestly, I mean, if if this ever happened in real, we'd be calling them zombies. <laughs> yeah. If this ever happened in real life, then we're no longer living in this universe. Oh, come um, on. There could be some sort of you, you seen virus. Any, you seen any of the trailers for uh, World War Z? Yes. I saw the, uh, what, the other day. Before the Evil Dead movie. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. It looks like a lot of fun. Brad Pitt in a zombie movie. Yeah. Uh, it's not apparent. Well, from that trailer, they never show you that close trailer. Up. They didn't make it apparent, but that's just a different audience they're trying to appeal to, make it look like an adventure movie. Yeah, but no, this is based on a novel and the Z or Z. World War Z. That's right. Kind of interesting because the trailer I saw made them look yeah. like they were ants. Yeah. They were just... Yes. They were cl- trying to climb yeah. up walls and just yeah. uh, one on top of another. Yeah. And it, but, but Amazing the way, special effects. The, the way that particular trailer, because I saw another one where they very obviously were zombies... 
But the theatrical trailer that Mark and I saw before um, the Evil Dead reboot uh, a couple of weeks ago was very much more along the lines of The Road, that post-apocalyptic yeah. movie where everybody is just trying to survive and there are gruesome evil swine living on other people right as the world breaks down utterly and there is because there's no vegetation there's nothing there's no yeah. sunshine yeah so there's so there isn't anything anyway i think we both agree then season three was a lot more fun to watch than season two Yes, it was, it was a, much a more, lot more violent. Oh my God! They started off the season with a bang. Kind yes, of. they yeah. just bolted out of the yeah. gate. Yeah, because I guess they had a, had a lot of feedback over the summer or the break they had from season two. And uh, I slow. They were yeah. they, they were already losing viewers. Yeah. Uh, halfway through season two, so I think that's probably when Frank Darabont, who brought this to the small screen, when he got chucked out as the head honcho, <laughs> but. He's still in there. He's yeah. still involved. He wrote, I think, the final episode for this season. And I don't know if he did any directing, but uh, Darabont is still in there. And, of course, he influenced casting to a very great extent because it was his series more right. than anyone else's the first season. So, Carol, I mentioned, Melissa McBride, she's in uh, The Mist. Lori Holden, who plays uh, Andrea, who really came into her own this season and then <laughs> won't be coming into anything <laughs> anymore after yeah. the last episode. Oh, my and, God. And also, of course, a um, character who died at the end of the second season, played by Jeffrey DeMunn. Dale. So, Dale, yeah, he died. But all three of those actors were in The Mist, uh, Frank Darabont, uh, Stephen King movie. And now, that was a good movie. You know where I realized that I knew uh, Laurie Holden, the woman who plays Andrea? She is in, and we mentioned this recently, she is in the original... Silent Hill. Silent Hill, yeah, Silent yeah. Hill. So she's in the first one of those movies, but I just watched an hour's worth on commercial TV of... One of my favorite monster movies, which is Tremors. Right. Kevin Bacon and Fred Ward. And she is the young scientist oh, is she? who's spending her summer oh, with the seismographs. She's been in around for quite valley. a while. Yeah, yeah. And she's so likable in that, but she plays sort of a nerd, sort of a, yeah. a schnooky girl. She's maybe not quite cool enough for Kevin Bacon. Until everybody but, but realizes but, but, but that Kevin, Kevin Bacon is also a bit of an idiot. Yeah, a yeah. nerd. Yeah. 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 The nice thing about that is she's really smart, and she does save the group a few times. Yeah. Like, stay on the rocks, yeah. you know, and they, they do the pole vaulting. But she's also, like, she's working by herself out in the desert, so she's got that white zinc all down her yeah, nose, yeah, and she yeah, looks yeah. kind of clownish. Yeah. And she, it isn't until afterwards that she's realized she's made a real bad impression on this cute guy. Yeah. And it's nice to see the, the shoe on the other foot. Yeah. That she's the nerd, and he's the winner. Well, yeah. I don't know if he's a winner. But yeah. <laughs> well, that's it. That, both him and, and the Fred Ward character are a couple of dopes. Who yeah. Do odd jobs. And just as they decide they're going to leave this, just, this the, podium, Dunk Valley forever. That's when the tremors start Started happening, happening and, the, and, it, and they get blocked off. And the giant they can't worms leave. come up out of the ground. Yeah. yeah, love that movie. Anyway, so Laurie Holden's been around for quite a while, uh, longer than I expected. Yeah, I did not recognize her. And uh, Andrea's character went from being rather mousy in the first season, where she just gives up. She's going to die in the last episode of the first season. Mm -hmm. And the Jeffrey DeMunn character says, well, if you're going to kill yourself, then I'll kill myself, too. Yeah. I'll stay here and we'll blow up together in the government lab. Mm -hmm. That makes her get up and move. And in the second season, she becomes a fighter equal to the men. And that is nicely echoed in the last scene when she's been mauled and is going to die and going to turn. And she won't let herself turn. So she gets a pistol from one of the group, and she makes a wisecrack. I know about the safety, which was a joke from when she's given her first pistol and doesn't know to take the safety off. Mm -hmm. so it's nice, the arc that that character took. And with a TV series, way more than movies, you can have these characters develop. A longer arc. Yeah, yeah, yeah really become closer to three-dimensional characters. In the last season, this season, she was alone with Michonne for Michonne, quite a yeah. while. And so they were... They spent the winter together, and then yeah. they found the, the little town with the governor, and she wanted so badly to stay there. Yeah, she hoped that she'd found a little bit of normalcy. Yeah, and she actually falls for the governor for yep. her. And Until she, Michonne, she on the realizes other hand, and discovers, and people yeah. tell her what a monster he is. 
And Michonne, on the other hand, uh, recognizes the yeah. governor for who he is yeah, you, right you, away. You get the idea that she's had a lot more rough, swinish men in her life. Yes. She talks about the two armless, jawless zombies that she has on chains that keeps other zombies away. They're mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. decoys, I guess, in reverse. And she talks about who they were to Andrea just briefly, and that is that they were pigs when they were alive, and they deserved no better. Really? Yep. Around the campfire. I, it's thought, a flashback. I thought they were supposed to be her brother and I her... think in the comics they yeah. are. But that still doesn't mean that they couldn't be evil swine. That's, you know? that's true. Yeah, that's yeah. true. They could have been. But getting on with Andrea, you know, she wanted to fix yeah, the yeah. little community. Yeah. How many could... times in the last episode does she say, I just didn't want more people to die? Yeah. It's, so it's she, tragic. Unfortunately, she had the opportunity to kill the governor mm. at one point and she couldn't do it no. because she figured she could change. Jim. Yeah. Um, women always it, think that. <laughs> and hey, then, I can't tell you the number of women who've tried to change me. <laughs> but, you know, I wriggle around and I refuse to get that diaper on. <laughs> I will not be changed. <laughs> I can tell. That's a disgusting image. The great trick. She has these huge arms. <laughs> yeah. you know, and I wondered how she got those. Like a gorilla. Like a, they <laughs> Come drag, on, Jerry. They drag behind it's time it. to be changed. That's right. an- another character, well, two characters that uh, really had a lovely story arc as well is is uh, the Dixon brothers, Daryl and Merle. Norman Reed is playing Daryl. He's still with us, thank goodness. But his <laughs> his rotten, swinish, bigoted, filthy brother, uh, Merle. Merle, played by Michael Rooker. Now that guy, he's never going to be playing the romantic lead. <laughs> the very first thing I ever saw him in was Henry, Portrait of a Serial Killer. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And he is Henry. And that movie was actually banned in our province of British Columbia. Was it? It was banned, although as soon as I heard that it was banned, you went out and- I ran to my local independent video store and borrowed their copy. Mm-hmm. But that movie was considered by various state and provincial governments as being like a training film for a, snuff- a serial killer. Really? Yeah, it's not a snuff film. It's about murderers. Yeah. A little too accurate then? Well, it's based on a real pair of serial killers. Oh, is it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. And Henry's uh, modus operandi basically is to never do the same thing twice oh. and to keep moving. Mm-hmm. So he kills a few people and then he goes to the next town and he kills some more. But he's, you know, not leaving clues for the police the way, right. say, in Silence of the Lamb. <laughs> really? You want to be caught? Do you want people to find your woman's suit? Is you know, they, right? they, a new TV series called Hannibal. Oh, God, really? Yes. And it's sitcom? Actually, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, I'm home. I saw the first episode, and it actually looks pretty good. Right. Open that bottle of Chianti, yeah, because I brought home liver. Because uh, <laughs> Hannibal is a teacher. He was actually... Professor. He, he was a psychologist. And, and, and a lecturer. Yeah. yeah. That's and this other guy who's also a teacher, he uh, helps this, the FBI solve crimes right. because he can put himself in... He's a profiler. Yeah. Yeah. He, and he can put himself in... Well, they, well, they're going right back to the first Hannibal Lecter yeah. movie in which Hannibal is a very minor character. And right. And that was Red Dragon. Yeah. It looks really cool because it, he's not the main character. Right. Right. It's the other guy's yeah. the main character. Well, the even, even Silence of the Lambs, the most interesting character may be Hannibal Lecter. Oh, not Jody. No way. She's, she was she's the heroine, but she's not she's not the most interesting. The most interesting is Hannibal Lecter. Well, yes. And true. and he is not the main character. That's right. He's, he but he looms large. Yeah. His shadow is cast over everything and everybody in that movie. That's true. That's what's so good about that yeah. movie. Is it they is don't overdo all, it. Yeah. Well, it works sometimes. I shouldn't say never, but usually with horror movies and that is what Silence of the Lambs is, the monster shouldn't be in every scene. Yeah. It works better if the suspense builds, continues to build. Some of the greatest horror movies, the classic horror movies, you don't even see the monster until halfway through. If that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You look at the original movie, The Haunting, you never see a monster in that. Yeah. All you see is like doors breathing in and out and you hear chains and Moans. It was speaking of monsters. Yeah, you, you look at classic scenes like the the scene in Psycho where the stabbing in the shower. Yeah. And then you you look at the last Evil Dead thing when someone's hacking off their arm. <laughs> yeah. That is so tame. The Psycho yeah. scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is so tame. You don't see her cut. You no. You don't see her bleeding. No. You see something going down the drain. Yes. 
and you see her falling out of the shower and her eye, and the pupil of her eye sort of focusing, and that's her Yeah, eye. and the shower curtain ripping off yeah, one thing at a time. Off, yeah. that, that's so stylized yeah, and well done. Much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hitchcock but, really, really raised the bar for murder scenes. And that's a psychological that thriller. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a gore fest. No, I think I'd still classify it as a horror movie, though. I mean, it is literally a slasher movie. Yeah. <laughs> that is Norman's chosen method of murder. And they, and, Norman's mother's and method. And speaking of that, they, they're, they've got yeah, a new series about him I'd now. I watched an episode of that, and I thought it sucked. Yeah, I, I watched half that episode. Slow, slow, slow. What's with all these women going after it? All these yeah. nice little teenagers yeah. all want Norman. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's like, holy crow. But, I wish that happened to the, me when I was a teenager. Psycho is his mother yeah. more, more than him, right? Yeah. So they're taking not just from the original movie, but from the various sequels. Tony Perkins reprising his role as Norman Bates. Yeah. Anyway, back to uh, Walking Dead. <laughs> so what are we talking about? So the oh, two brothers, Merle, the Dixon yes. brothers. So Merle, the evil brother, we lose him in the first season when he is handcuffed and T-Dog loses the keys to the cuff. They have to abandon Merle, although they go back for him the next day. But they have to abandon him, and he's scared enough that he uses a hacksaw to cut off his own hand. So when we run into him, the last episode of the first half of season three when the two brothers are reunited. Yeah, no, I guess we've seen him before. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. That's yeah, right, yeah. yeah. But, that, but that was the cliffhanger for the first half of season three. Yeah. Was the two brothers were, were being forced Actually to met fight. Up. Yeah. And they escape. The family comes in and, and manages to rescue both the Dixon brothers. And so Merle is not really fitting in. And he knows he's not fitting in, but he can't go back to the governor because the governor, the governor wants, wants him dead. <laughs> wants him tortured and dead. And he knows the governor, governor, he is not a forgiving man. No, Merle is useful to the group because he does know the governor's tactics Mm -hmm. to some extent. Even though they never listen to him. He keeps saying, go in there and kill him. Go in there and kill him. And they yeah, keep... well, several of them want to do that. That's that's what Stephen Yoon's character... Yeah, um, well, yeah, because he was tortured. Glenn. Glenn yeah. wants to go in and... Well, it isn't that he was tortured. It's that his girlfriend was, was tortured, tortured as well. Yeah. yeah. And that's what he can't forgive Merle for, either. We both said, after the episode in which Herschel is reading the Bible and Merle can say the line, he can answer can verse we... for verse. Yeah. So, at one point, he was a good Christian. Or a Jew. Yeah. No, I pointed out that he could have been beaten. It could yes. have been beaten. In- oh, yeah. No, we, we heard about how awful their, the Dixon father was to both boys. So, you know. Merle ran away as soon as he could and left Daryl there to deal with the dad. And, and there is an episode where the brothers are fighting and uh, Merle rips his brother's shirt off and sees the wounds on his back that the father inflicted. Yeah. So there's still tenderness between the brothers. Merle knows that there's nobody else in the world who cares for for him except his brother mm-hmm. and his brother is committed to this group of yeah. survivors led yeah. by Rick and he's quite willing to leave him for this group well he'd have to at first he says no I'll stick with my brother yeah. and they leave the group but he realizes before it's dark that I can't do this. And, yeah. and he goes back and his brother has to follow him. That's because right. Because his brother otherwise is in the woods all, all alone. By, yeah, all by yeah. himself. And he yeah. knows he can't survive. And even he, own. even tough guy knows he can't survive. Yeah. yeah. But Merle, you know, he shows his stuff. He's going to take Michonne back on the off chance that the governor is a man of his truth. word yeah. and will actually let the people in the prison survive. Leave them unmolested if he just gets his hands on Michonne, who put his eye out. And, of course, Merle knows this isn't going to happen. And I think he takes her along as sort of moral support or Merle support. Support. Because he just comes to a decision and he stops the car and he gives her... Well, after a, a good conversation. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, she's, she's and working that, and that a really But he's already leaning that way, I think. He yeah, already she knows. Needed, but he needed the nudge. Yeah. I mean, he knows that he can't show up with Michonne and hand her over to the governor and walk away himself. No. He knows that. And he doesn't trust the governor. Not as far as he could throw ten zombies. He, yeah. He knows he can't trust the governor. So I think subconsciously he knows that he's going to do good. And that is to try and assassinate the governor. Right. And at the very least, he does manage to, by... (laughs) He gets his drink. 
He's been searching the whole episode yeah. for booze or drugs, something to take the, the, the pain off. out. Yeah. yeah. And so he found a, a bar, and he's got his bottle, and he's in this car, and he slowly leads this herd of zombies toward where the governor and his men are lying in ambush for Rick and whoever else shows up with Michonne. Because the governor is just going to murder them. Yeah. He's just been lying the whole oh, time. Oh, yeah. The guy's a slime. Oh, it, completely and utterly. And uh, and the thing is, is he's not only betraying the other group, he's betraying everybody in his, his own town. In his town, yeah. yeah because yeah. he's constantly lying to yeah. them. Yeah. And he's shown that he can't be trusted. In, in the ones even closest to him at this point... Yeah. Don't know what to do with him because no. he's, well, he's not a man of his word. He's only got two guys with him by the end of the third season. Yeah. He has his little army, and at one point the army goes, Now, hang on a second. We're perfectly willing to come out here as a group and fight against the walkers, the biters, as yeah. they call them. But for God's sakes, we're not going to go murder other human beings. Yeah. And so the governor loses his temper, and he just machine guns them all to death, with the exception of one woman. Who survives and is going to be incorporated. Then he doesn't know that. He he goes through and shooting them one by one. Yeah. She was fortunately enough to be underneath. Under a corpse. Yeah. Yeah, And the governor had to leave at that moment when he got to her. Again, I mean. He's a bad guy. Every one of them had a gun. Mm Mm-hmm. And he starts shooting yeah, them. Yeah, nobody, nobody, nobody took a pot shot at him. No, yeah. they just watched it happen. Well, you know, they did the exact same thing when the governor takes out that... They weren't that, on the same side. No, no, when he takes out the army group. Yeah. It's either the first or the second episode where we meet the governor yeah. and, and his little town. He comes out and hands in the air, and then his men pop up and start shooting the army guys. Not one of those army guys gets a shot off. Oh, that's... And they have a bloody big gun on top of a jeep. Yeah. And that guy, you know, okay, they shot him, but there isn't another guy who can jump up there and, and machine gun the bad guys? Yeah. It does have plot holes now and then this series. Yeah. I certainly wouldn't give it 100% for credibility. Yeah. But you are dealing with a zombie apocalypse, so, you know, reality is pretty much out the window. <laughs> well, with the Murrow character, I called it. I called it in season one. In season one, when he disappeared, I said he'd be back, and I said that his brother would end up killing him. Oh, sure. And towards the end of this... Uh, his brother didn't really kill him. Yeah, well, okay. <laughs> The governor killed I, I did, him. I did say that one of two things could happen a couple shows back uh, when we were talking about it. I said he could eat, he's going to redeem himself by yeah. sacrificing himself, yeah. Yeah. Uh, or his brother's still going to kill him. Yeah. And lo and behold, both things happened. <laughs> yeah, although still, his brother didn't kill him. The governor killed him. Yeah, but his finished, brother just, he shot him. His brother put the zombie out of its uh, out Anyway, of its so he did sacrifice himself. Yeah. His, the governor shot him, and then his brother had to finish the job. Yeah. Basically. Yeah, but he was dead. Oh, you're not going to give it to me, are you? But oh, well, I, no, I mean, it's it's just, it's a fact. When you're killing a zombie, that person is gone. The governor makes, now, makes a point of blasting a hole right through Merle's chest. Like, when the zombie Merle gets up from eating corpse yeah. and starts staggering towards Daryl, we get a shot of him approaching Daryl and we see where the bullet came out of him. <laughs> like, his spine is blown apart. These How zombies are really tough. How do they walk exactly. without a spine? That yeah. Means really? Yeah, so we know from the government germ man in, in the end of the first season that these things do have some small amount of brain activity. Well, I'm sorry, but if the spine is broken, those weak signals are still not going to get to the legs. Well, they can't. No, they couldn't. They, so it's, it's really silly. Unless it's like the thing, mm. John Carpenter's the right. thing, where every part of the body yeah. becomes its own entity. Well, and it does, of course. Yeah, you <laughs> chop, chop the head off and the body falls over, but the head, head continues to live. live. And I like the fact that Merle is using Michonne's uh, samurai sword to chop the heads off zombies. After he lets her go and gives her her sword back, as she's making her way back to the prison on foot, she's stopping and putting these severed heads out of their misery. Yes. Which just goes to show she's a little more decent. (laughs) <laughs> you know, she or she just she's OCD and she just wants to tie up all the loose ends. But you know, Rick well, dealt you with never some know. severed heads. I mean, if the, there's a bunch of severed heads hanging around and you're walking in the field, <laughs> you never know. You could get hit if you're in your bit. bare feet yeah. and you're drunk. Your toes and, could be gone. Yeah, yeah. The governor tries to use uh, severed heads uh, dumped out of his aquarium tanks to bite Michonne when they're fighting hand-to-hand. Yeah. What has got to be the most vicious fight I've ever seen 
on TV between a man and a woman. Well, it really looked like they were just trying to kill I each saw, other. I uh, saw there's a series called Banshee, and uh, they had a fight between yeah. a man and a woman. My God, that was brutal. It yeah. was brutal. Yeah, there's something particularly ugly about that. When, and when are they going to let time. women in to fight men in the, uh, yeah. the oct- octagon cage? Yeah, matches. the cage matches. Let's, let's see that happen. <laughs> How about two women against a guy? That would make it more fair. <laughs> a couple oh. of little women against a giant guy. <laughs> Give the women chainsaws. Yes. <laughs> That's what those fights seem like to me. Just how, how monstrous can you make these people? Uh, and Rick, I mean, Rick has gone through hell. Oh well, he he went insane this season after losing Lori, and, and Lori keeps popping up. Yeah, and he's still trying to be guided by her. Um, he sees her standing up on the wall, just silently watching him. And it's at that point that he says, no, I can't hand Michonne over to this monster. I can't do it. Mm. And it's because of her. It's because he's still seeking her approval. Right. And afterward, when things have worked out for the group and they've managed to kill a bunch of the governor's men as they burst into the prison and none of them has been shot, you see him looking for Laurie. And she's not there. And he sort of smiles to himself because he's like, she's never there to start with. (laughs) And now I'm looking for her, like, give me the thumbs up, honey. I did the right thing. Yeah. But I must say that I thought the ambush in the prison was really, really well done because... Mm -hmm. At the beginning of the final episode of season three, everybody's getting ready to go. They're packing. They're loading stuff into cars. Carl, the boy, the 12-year-old, is really upset Mm -hmm. that they're just running away. And off they go. And when the governor's men come in, in force, and they are storming And they're blowing up everything. They've got these When, When they are finally attacked by... Who have you got attacking? You've got Rick. You've got Glenn. You've got Maggie, Mm -hmm. Lauren Cohen's character, wonderful character, and you have Daryl. And, oh my gosh, it's a slaughter. They just, they have the advantage of knowing the place, and they, unbeknownst to the governor, they've had a good run. They've brought back a lot of weapons. Like, they've got stun grenades, they've got concussion grenades, they've got smoke, they've got everything they need to just cause a panic among these people who are not soldiers. Right. And the governor, that's why he winds up shooting them all, because they're useless to him as an army. <laughs> they just immediately <laughs> and they panic and run away. And they all are questioning his judgment. Oh, yeah. So once they... Because they didn't know they were going not, into They're not good fighters. People. They they don't want to listen to him. They're, they're useless. Yeah. 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 To him. And what about his second command He's guy? He's really Remember thinning out the herd. Remember you were really razzing that second in command guy? Yeah. Accountant guy. Oh, yeah, yeah. His his name is Milton. 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 Milton Mehmet, played by Dallas Roberts. That's right. Now, what did you think about his character? Yeah, that? he had a change of heart. That was slowly building, I thought. He was getting more and more disgusted with the governor. Right. He was willing to turn a blind eye to the governor going out and murdering people to bring back supplies. But once the governor started going psycho and, and making vendettas against people that were not going to be an advantage to murdering, yeah. he started changing. Plus, I think he had a thing for for Andrea. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. yeah I think so, too. Yeah. yeah. Th- and she I was in the was governor's re- inner circle to a great extent. She was helping to lead the town, and she was doing it in a decent, fair way. Yeah. And the governor was only using her. At, at no point did he have any feelings for her. The only person that we know he had feelings for, for his daughter. was his dead daughter. Yeah. And she's dead. Yeah. yeah. She was a zombie. Yeah. <laughs> she's already dead, and he won't admit And it. that's why he wanted Michonne so badly. That's right. Because... It she, wasn't the eye so much as it was <laughs> supposedly murdering his dead daughter. That's right. I thought the whole scene with Andrea and Milton... Yep. It's brilliant, because, you know... Oh, wait, wait. Now, now you got to explain. Yeah. The governor was about has, to. <laughs> has ordered Milton to kill Andrea. Yeah. And gives him a great big knife, and Milton makes a move as if he's going to, and then he turns on the governor, and the governor takes a knife and guts him. Yeah. Just stabs into his belly until he is he, a he, bleeding mass He on says the at the beginning that, Milton, you're not leaving this room until you kill yeah. Andrea. And he's right. And so he didn't yeah. want to kill Andrea. He guts him. And leaves him there to die, to turn into a zombie, so that he will kill mm-hmm. him. And Andrea's handcuffed to... Tied to a chair. I think it was a handcuff. No, it's wires. That's why the pliers would work, to oh, cut her from okay. self free. So she's wired yeah, to a she, chair. <laughs> she's tied to the chair with bailing wire. Uh, but Milton manages to drop a pair of pliers 
behind her chair. And once the governor is gone and they're locked in the room and she's tied to the chair and Milton is dying and they both know he's dying and what will happen, he says, I dropped those pliers. If you can use your right foot to drag them out, you can get yourself free. Yeah. And then you find something sharp and kill me. Yes. Drive it into my head. And she's dawdling. They're having these little conversations, the the two of them. And she's, you know, like, I'll get the pliers in a minute. So, you know, how, how are you? Are you? <laughs> <laughs> You're still with me, Milton? And, of course, the greatest liberty that the writers take in this series, as they do so often in these zombie movies, is the amount of time between death and... And resurrection yes. uh, is entirely on what's dramatic. Arbitrary. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, you, even the government germ guy says, you know, well, we've seen as as long as uh, a day and as slow as, uh, you know, an hour. Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah. It, with Milton, it looks to be about five minutes. Yeah. So, you know, it's... It, 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 she was fumbling with that wire for a while. Yeah, well, Andrea's sister took all night to turn. Yeah. She cradles her dead sister all night and then kills her just yeah. as she's coming back to undead life. But maybe she wasn't quite dead yet. <laughs> not quite. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, just, it, it, I'm not there yet. That, 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 not quite dead. Yeah. I'll come back on Tuesday. Yeah. So now individual characters. I thought Michonne was, was a terrific addition. Played yes. by Danae Guerrera. She's just a uh, hellcat, apart from the fact I think that she could be doing more in the show. She, she's still sort of on her own. She's yeah. not part of the, the, the... Well, I think she's part of the group now. Now she is. From episode to episode, she kind of disappears yeah. a couple yeah. of times. Well, she had her own stuff to do. For one thing, she really wanted to kill the governor. And uh, she should have. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. It's a shame that she didn't. And Andrea had, had her, her chance. You know, everybody's had a shot at the governor. Yeah. Even Merle took a literal shot at the governor and and. Unfortunately, another dude walked between them and took the bullet in the head. But, yeah. Um, Merle's strategy was, you know, he was drunk at that point, but, <laughs> but he's just going to try and kill the governor and he as many of the governor's few, men. Yeah, he took out quite yeah. a few men. Yeah, uh, By, he didn't even have to kill the governor's men. He just had to wound them so that they dropped, and then the Walking Dead came in and finished them off in a very horrible way. So what happens? Okay, you're wounded. Yep. A group of walking dead come up to you yep. and start eating you. Yep. At some point, you're going to die yep. and become a zombie yep. and say, what are you doing? Unless they eat your head. <laughs> well, I, yeah. I never see them yeah. chomping on a head. Oh, no. I get the they idea. They go for the softer the, parts. The governor went around and killed everybody who hadn't yet turned. You know, the, the heads were blown open. We saw that when... Um, now, I was when, just commenting in general, yeah. if you're yeah. getting eaten by zombies. Yeah, indeed. Indeed. Well, of course, you will. At some point, yeah. you, you're going to turn. Well, no, not necessarily. You could you could be one of those guys that takes a day to turn. Yeah. By then, you're all eaten. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it depends. It, these zombies don't just go for brains, the way no. the traditional George Romero no, yeah, zombies go. Yeah, they love go. the guts. They just eat anything. Yeah, there's been lots of scenes of hot dog links being pulled out of stomachs. Yeah, I remember the, right at the beginning of the series, they did that to the horse. Yeah. yeah. Hold yeah. its intestines yeah. out. Right yeah, right next to the tank. Hot yeah. horse intestine. Yeah, delicious. Speaking of tanks, why didn't one of them go back to the city and grab oh, one of those tanks? It's a tank, <laughs> I know. Yeah. And Carl, look at what he's done this season. Oh. Yes. Yeah, he became a stone-cold mercenary soldier yeah. by the end. For what appears to be uh, questionable motives, he shoots one of the governor's men, who is himself just a teenage boy. And Herschel and Carl are together, and Herschel says to the boy, escaping, put down your gun. Yeah. And the kid is either putting it down or handing it over, and Carl just puts one through his head. Well, that's the thing. I mean, when And that scares Herschel. Herschel, when Herschel said put it down and the kid didn't put no, it he down. Didn't put it down right away. He starts walking towards yeah. them. He's handing it out. He's not pointing it at them anymore. So Herschel is right. The kid does appear to be giving up his gun. When Carl shoots him in the head, the kid does not have a gun pointed at either of them. Not at so that moment. No. Carl really does just take it on himself to kill an enemy. And that scares Herschel, and Herschel tells Rick what happened, and he makes it seem as if I think Carl is a little psychopath. Yeah. I'm not sure we can ever trust him again. And Rick talks to his son, and Carl says, well, you know, I had to make a call, and he was an enemy. Yeah, but he was handing over his gun. He wasn't an armed enemy. Well, he was an enemy. 
Mm. And we have to be realistic. And I understood what he means, because this is not the moral world of Herschel. No. This is not the moral world of his father when he was a lawman. And yet at the same time, the kid throws his dad's sheriff's badge at him. Mm. And he's basically saying, you know, grow a pair, dad. Mm. This is a different world and we cannot afford to pussyfoot around or words to that effect. Yeah, it was a very chilling moment. It was. And wise beyond his years. You yeah. Know, because but, he has a, he's under, accepted can, the world as it I is. I can really understand where he's coming yeah, from. I mean, yeah. you told him to put his weapon down. He hesitated. Yep. Bang, you're dead. Yeah, I know. The dumb kid should have just dropped it and yeah. hands in the air. Yeah. And even then, Carl might have potted him. You never know. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I think they killed more humans I, in this ep- in this season than they killed zombies. Well, you know? <laughs> there was quite a few zombies trotted off. I mean, the governor had the, the pit full oh, of zombies. Oh, the burned ones. And they're not even uh, dead, dead after yeah. they've been burned. They're just like this glued together, melted mass of fat and skin. <laughs> oh, yeah. And they're all still sort of twitching yeah. and moaning. Yeah, yeah. And the ones on top can actually move their heads. Yeah, it oh, was horrible. Oh. What a scene. That reminded me of John Carpenter's The Thing. Yeah, you that's know, true. That, that hideous they... monster that's made up of all kinds of parts, yeah. alien and human. Yeah. Yeah, monstrous thing. And they burn that, too. So another character that has really developed from the first season to the last is Melissa McBride's character, Carol. She went from being a beaten wife in the first season, her husband getting eaten by zombies. Yee-hee. Yeah, no loss there. And then she, she felt guilty though. She oh, <laughs> she doesn't feel that guilty when she's they have to destroy the heads of yeah. their own dead before they're burned or buried, whatever they're gonna do with them. And she says she'll do it to her husband and she takes her shovel or her axe or whatever and she breaks his skull open and then she does it again and again and she just goes a little mad and she pulps her dead husband's head Mm. and from then on she gets tougher and tougher just as andrea does in a way they're they're sort of well that kind of makes sense in in the whole series i mean you are going to get tougher as as time goes on plus she saw her daughter turned into a zombie and saw rick put a bullet through the kid's head Mm. and it had to be done Far and more they, realistic and, than the governor. And plus, it's it's like war. I mean, yeah. you have a, a bunch of guys that get trained together. They become very good friends. They go off to war. And one by one, each one of them, yeah. your, your friends are getting killed off. Yeah. It's like a daily thing. And you don't know who's going to survive. Yeah. And it's yeah. like it really hardens you to yeah. the fact that you can't really grow attached to people around right. you as much right. as you should. So Yeah, well, yeah, you're opening yourself up. I mean, it's like losing friends. So the friends the you do have, you cherish more. Yeah. But the strangers you meet, yep. you don't really want to befriend them. Well, that's them. it. Rick was going to sell Michonne out, you know, yeah. uh, even though she helped Proof. them. And she was proving herself yeah. to be really, really useful. That second last episode of season three, after Rick has said to Daryl and Merle and Herschel mm-hmm. that this is the deal yeah. that the governor has put out and I'm going to take it. Mm-hmm. And none of them thinks it's worthwhile doing. Yeah. They, none of them think the governor is trustworthy. Yeah. Especially Merle, who knows the governor better than anybody else there. Mm. And, of course, Merle is the one who takes her away because he says, now, Rick won't be able to do it. He'll change his mind. He'll yeah. wimp out. Yeah. And that's exactly what Rick does. He, he wimps out, but then again, yeah. Merle wimps out, too. That's right. In a way, he wimps out, but it isn't... No, I can't agree. He doesn't wimp out. He does the right thing. He does. It, he does the much harder thing, which is knowing he's going to sacrifice himself. And the governor's men know that there's somebody taking pot shots at them from that shack. And they're about to burst through the door when Merle comes bursting the other way, fighting a zombie. Right. So, you know, I mean, it's just bad all around. (laughs) (laughs) Exciting. There was only... Yeah. A couple episodes where I thought it was a little slow, it was a little too much talking. Mm -hmm. But other than that, I mean, I don't expect every show to be just fighting. Yeah, yeah. But the dramatic parts and the development of the characters are all working really well. We have nice little development between uh, the Glenn character and Mm -hmm. Herschel's older daughter, Maggie. He's so sweet. Glenn went out and found a a girl through the fence, and he cuts her fingers off and gives... Gives Maggie the ring. It's so sweet. <laughs> and and you know, the interesting thing was that those two fingers that Glenn cuts off to oh, get yeah? the ring are the same two fingers that the governor bites off when he's fighting later in the episode. And he spits them out, yeah. showing that he's no better than The Walking Dead. What do you think is going to happen in the next season? I have 
steadfastly refuse to read anything online about what is planned for season four. And I also made a point of not watching The Talking Dead even though I've got them on the PVR at home, I haven't watched them because I wanted to talk about what I saw and hear what you said. Right. I didn't want to just repeat what you know Kevin Smith or whoever the yeah, guest yeah, is. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I actually haven't watched any of those shows this season. No, they're so lightweight. You know, they show you a little clip clip from the next episode yeah. and stuff like that. Well, they, they don't want to give too much away no, at the same time as no. they, they want to. You know, they went from a half hour to a whole hour, and they're really stretching Oh, really? It. There just they? isn't that much to talk about for Well, an heck, we're trying to stretch it to an hour. Yeah, but we're talking the whole season, <laughs> yeah, I that's, think. That's slightly, that's very slightly true. different. We haven't really talked a lot, enough about Glenn and Maggie. Yeah. Uh, I think that whole torture scene mm-hmm. really defined Glenn's outlook on life. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and Maggie... He holds a grudge, that guy. Oh, yeah. Well, he's become really, you can say, a man at that point. Yeah, yeah. Because now he's going to save his woman. Yeah. He's going he's gonna to protect what's he, he his. Was, he was their little stuntman, though. He was the guy who'd go down the yeah. well. He, I mean, he was But useful. he was still a kid. But he was acting like a kid. Yeah, yeah. He, he didn't realize how dangerous all that stuff yeah. was. And it's, it's when he falls in love with Maggie, I think, that he starts to grow up. And he starts to realize that there's a reason he should be more careful. I think... And the double torture that they went through together yeah. is another other bonding thing with them. yeah the i think the maggie character can be fleshed out more i don't yeah. think there was enough yeah. of her this season yeah. she's a terrific character yeah that actress there's another english actress by the way ah Lauren Cohen. She was the femme fatale, the producer of the Death Race movie. Death Race movie? She's she's in one of those movies as the femme fatale villainess. Ah. And uh, she's all done up and she's playing a TV producer and TV presenter who was a beauty queen and she's all done up in like sexy gowns and all the makeup and that and she is so hot. Yeah. And you see her in this and... She's a, a farm girl. She's a farm girl. She's very well scrubbed and, and, you know, she appears to have no makeup. That's the art of makeup, is yeah. to make it look like she has no makeup yeah. and yet still make her hot. Because yeah. she is. She's the hottest survivor they got. <laughs> her little well, sister yeah. hasn't done well, that's much because, either. because most of them are dying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Her little sister hasn't done a hell of a lot either. Emily Kinney plays Beth, the younger sister. No, you don't see her very much at all. No. She's just caring for the kid. The, yeah, the, that's the right. Baby. Looking after the baby. And yeah. The, so. And she sang a nice uh, Tom Waits song at the end of a recent episode. Oh, did she? Um, Herschel, on the other hand, I mean, he's basically just going with the flow. Well, he's the patriarch. He's definitely... I mean, when he shouted at Rick a couple of episodes before the end, Rick actually does stop and pay attention because rick has been dictator this year and herschel is just basically saying you know for god's sakes if you're going to lead us then lead us Hmm. don't walk away right and he's right we're willing to follow you but you have to lead us yeah you can't just give up because you're he mentally had, he tired. He had several conversations yeah. with him about oh, yeah, that. Yeah. And then, like you said, Rick's done a 180. Yeah. Now yeah. it's suddenly, okay, when we're deciding on something important, we're going to have a vote. We have to. Yeah. Yeah. Because we're a group. We're a family. And it's not him in charge anymore. Plus, it was too much. Yeah. He cracked up. Yeah. He had a nervous breakdown. That's it. Yeah. He, uh, he, he realized that his decisions are life and death for the rest of the crew. And they and they were getting more and more irrational. Yeah. Before we wrap this up, let's talk about um, the governor and our favorite group of survivors. And what do you think? Let's make predictions here. What's going to happen in the fourth season? Oh, God. Uh, they're going to stay in the prison, I think. The governor's got to rally somehow because at this point he's only got two of his lieutenants. I say the American pronunciation of lieutenant. And they were absolutely poop scared watching him slaughter everybody else. They didn't want to blink, that's for sure. I know, but they're both of them with machine guns. They yeah. couldn't have taken him out at that point. That... They're such sheep. Yeah. They're, they're murderers, but they can't think for themselves. Well, maybe the, the fact that he didn't kill them, yeah. and they love killing. Yeah. yeah. So they're going, ah, we're, we're, we're still with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, we're yeah. We're still with you. It is on to the next slaughter, yeah. old master. Yeah, yeah because the, these guys didn't question him at all. No. Well, they were standing there. Oh, they, they're terrified. They're, they're like, because he's going he's gonna to kill us next. He's yeah. killing everybody. Yeah. It's just the governor's time to shine. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know what's going to happen with well, him. He's he, obviously had a big setback. Because, big setback. Because everybody in the town is yeah. now at the prison. That's right. And the only people that, yeah, that's right. Rick 
has gone into the town and brought back all the people who were incapable of fighting. He's brought back the old people, the infirm, and the children. There was a lot of food there for like six inmates. Yeah. And then the group comes in, and the inmates all got thinned out. (laughs) They're all gone now. Yeah, yeah. But the group is going through the food at an enormous rate. And now they brought in all these other humans. Yeah. That food is going to be gone, so they're going to have to scavenge wider and wider areas. If only they could eat zombies. <laughs> Where? Yeah, well, I, I suggested that a long time ago. You know, that, that, they yeah. have a food it's like source beef there. Beef jerky tastes like zombie chicken. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> delicious. Just, you know, what about soup? Yeah, bone soup. Yeah, bone soup. That's, <laughs> That's right. it. My prediction is that, that they're going to stay in the prison. The, the the group is safe in the prison. It's obviously easy to defend it. Not and, as comfortable. And now they've they've got all the governor's weapons. They've got a lot of the governor's weapons yeah. as well. Because they found the truck. They found where the slaughter was. And all those guns would have been there. Right. And the vehicles. So, yeah, so they're even you, more You would think prepared. the government would have spent a little bit of time picking up those guns and putting them in that, in that Jeep. He may have taken some, but I think he was just angry and insane. And they got in the car and drove away with him sulking. I have no idea where they're going to go from here. I mean... It's hard I, to believe the I, governor can make a it's comeback, hard. isn't it? I would say that it would be more comfortable to go to that town and secure it down. Yeah. Yeah, a little yeah, better. It, yeah. it looked like a nice place to live. Yeah, indeed. But prison is not the kind of place you really want to live in too long. No, but if they can clear, and they've got the weapons now, if they can clear those fields again, their plan was to the plant. plant. That's right, and Herschel is a farmer. Ma- and make a town. Yeah. And grow a community around there. Yeah, so, but, you know, that's still a they, possibility. But they seem like sitting ducks <laughs> because there's forest all around. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like somebody with a, a nice rifle could pick them off one yeah, at a time. Indeed. Yeah. All right, folks, we'll uh, we'll see you next time. We're going to have some uh, reviews of new movies, including Oz, The Great and Powerful, an independent movie called Gut, a movie from 2012 called In Their Skin. And uh, to cap it off, we're going to have a review of a funny sort of horror movie, A Fantastic Fear of Everything. Yeah. With Simon Pegg. Yes. One of our favorite English. And that'll do it for this time. He was Shaun of the Dead. Yes, he was. There you go. Another movie with him. Yes. We'll talk about it next show. All right. So uh, goodbye.